Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, it is not very often that I get excited about doing maintenance on my truck, um, but this is one of those situations to where I see this as an opportunity for an upgrade. So what we're doing today is, um, I, I actually need new rear shocks. Um, I've got about 85,000 miles on this truck, and the rear shocks just towing a trailer and, and bumpy roads and things. Um, it's done a number on the uh, uh, OEM original factory shocks that I have on here. So I'm going to be replacing those, but also I'm taking the opportunity to do that and I will be replacing the front shocks as well. Uh, it was one of those bundle kits. You end up saving, I think I saved like 120 bucks by doing the front, uh, ordering the front with the rear. All right, so what I'm changing those to are the, uh, the Fox Racing 2.0 um, made in the USA shock right so this is their performance series um, and the one reason so I had a 2003 um, Dodge three-quarter ton truck that I drove I had it 200,000 miles before uh, it finally ate a valve seat in the middle of Utah towing a trailer um, which is how I came to buy this truck and on that truck I went through I went through two sets of the Bilstein 5100s and they were good shocks. Um, they were really, they were really comfortable on, uh, you know, like city roads. They were just kind of rough. But whenever I got off the, you know, off road and, and I was doing any kind of um, over taxing of the suspension, what I noticed is they would get really stiff, really quickly. And when I would get out and I could put my hand on them, and they would, they would burn you if you kept your hand on there too long. And so. I don't know if the valving wasn't right in those, but like I said, I went through two of those, just wore them out, um, got a second set. And uh, again, whenever you're trying to get warranty service, because they do have a lifetime warranty, which is nice, uh, but it takes time. Like sometimes uh, on one of those, it was like a two week turnaround to where I had to pull my shocks off, take them in, uh, get them inspected, and then they had to determine whether or not it was covered under warranty. So instead, what I like about these Fox Racing shocks, which First of all, I've heard great things about them. I've ridden in trucks that have them. Um, I've ridden in off-road buggies that have them. And the valving is, is totally tunable and customizable. And the customer service um, is uh, out of this world. And also what I like is I can pull the shock off and I can rebuild it with one of the rebuild kits um, for like 30 bucks, 40 bucks, you know, including um, any charging or fluid or, or whatever I have to do to it. It doesn't matter what the shock, it doesn't get more expensive than that. So that alone is cheaper than shipping these things, shipping those things back to Bilstein. Not knocking Bilstein, there's a lot of people that love Bilstein, um, but I'm gonna go with the Fox Racing shocks on these ones. So uh, it's just pretty simple. This is gonna follow a, uh, you know, just a basic, shock replacement uh, it should be the same no matter what the application but this is specifically for a 2015 uh, Ram 2500 uh, this one's gas it's got the four link suspension in the rear end so solid axle with coil springs um, same thing in the front uh, the front what I am changing those two is so these are just like an OEM replacement for the rear and so on the front wait until you get a look at these beauties Right? That's the best thing about new stuff is showing it off, right? So these guys here, right, these are my new fronts. So I got the reservoir, it's tunable. Um, what I've noticed with front shocks is where I have most of my problem is I do a lot of, um, not necessarily off-roading, but I, I do a lot of um, travel on dirt roads or unmaintained roads. And usually when I'm doing that is because I'm trying to uh, save some time and get through some stuff and um, you know I'm doing high speeds and that's what really that that's what really puts stress on those shocks and so that extra reservoir you know it's like having a second monotube shock right there next to it all right so we're gonna get these done we're gonna get the front and the rear finish on these and uh, should be fairly simple should be easy to do with uh, you know any basic tools and I'm hoping I don't have to pull any wheels off so let's go ahead and let's get started the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull off this uh, this fender liner here this protector 
That way I can get access to that upper shock mount. This is just a 5 16 All right, so we got all the bolts out. Now we just bend this up out of the way. Ooh, dirty. Move this. Now I, I, so I probably could have done that without, without pulling that out and just instead came in and got on the back side. Um, but on my other side, I got some dents that I'm gonna pop out. So I'm just doing this in here so I can get access to that. But you can see now I can get a wrench on here. Should be nice and easy. And then I got a bolt on the bottom side that I'm gonna do. So. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the nut off the top. All right, so here we are. So this nut on top of this uh, this shock here is an 18 millimeter. And then the stud that goes through it, because that will wanna spin on you when you start to undo it. And you gotta get a hold of it with something. That's a nine millimeter. Now, good luck finding a nine millimeter wrench if you don't have one. Um, what you can do is you can get on the back with some vice grips and clip it and it will spin around it. It catch on the lip or it'll catch on something else and then you can um, break that loose and unscrew that. So, again, make sure you go in the right direction. So I'm just using, I'm using a ratchet wrench, which is nice and handy, but you don't have to use one of those. There we go. All right, so once that's loose, I just pull that top portion off here, and now I'm gonna loosen up the bottom. All right, so here's that bottom nut there. So I'm just gonna get on this with an impact, pull this apart, and then you can see when that goes up through the frame, and we'll just pull that down, collapse it, and it should pop right out. So this is just a 13 sixteenths. All right, just gotta have something on the back. Press the wrench for another 13 sixteenths. All right, so now I have this loose here. You can see it just falls out. Look at that, isn't that lovely? It's all the good stuff on the inside that's been leaking out. Do not open. Made in USA. Hey. You don't see that very often. Alright, so now I'm gonna show you how to put the other one. Alright, so here we are. I just took off that strap. Don't worry, you can recompress these if you need to. Um, on this one we're pretty fortunate. There's enough room to work on it. But take the top off here. Alright, split this in two like that. That's gonna go back up in the old hole in the top. And this is gonna line up with this hole down here in the bottom. So make sure you line that up with the top. Right? Collapse that. Just get it up in there. Put this on the back side. And then if you can't collapse it like this, you can always get under it with the pry bar. All right, you just gotta time it as it starts to expand and go back. There we go. Throw that back on there. Make sure you put your back up on it. And give it a little love. Now let's do the tire. All right, so that's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine is that this is a different size than stock. All right, just make them the same size, but I get it. So, let's tighten this up however you can.
All right, so we got it tightened down and I'm sure there are torque specs. You know, there's torque specs for everything, but I just did it until this was nice and snug down in here. Starts to squeeze this out just a little bit. So it's a nylon lock washer or a lock nut, so it's not gonna back off. You just wanna make sure that there's no slop in it, otherwise, you know, it'll cuck, 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 and you know, make an awful noise. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's do the front. All right, so looking at the front shocks, we see you got the reservoir here, and just looking at what came in the box, it's gonna be mounting hardware. It's gonna be mounting hardware for this reservoir. Now, if I had a lift or anything on this truck, this would be a little bit longer. I could move it in different directions. I mean, I possibly could twist this one around and, and mount it like that, which I might do. Um, or I'm just gonna mount it like that. All right, put this around it. Right. So it's just gonna hold it into place like that. So we'll see. I got a big coil spring in the front. Um, I gotta mount this behind it, whichever side it's on. So that'll determine a lot of things on how I mount this reservoir. All right, so looking at this front shock, you can see it's the same, let's see, you can see it's the same mounting fashion as the rear. Uh, this one actually has a bolt that goes through, so I'll get it on it on this side. And then you can see it's got a um, attachment here on the back side of that nut that keeps it from spinning all the way around. So this will catch on the other side. No need to put a, um, a backup on that one. I'll be able to take that off. The hard part comes with getting on the other side of there. Now, I could take this uh, inner fender cover off also, but I'm pretty sure that I can get in here with an extension, maybe um, some sort of U-joint or something, and I can get on there and I can get that taken off. Right, I just gotta get right down in there. We'll see what we can, we'll see what we can make happen. So I don't know how well you can see that, but what I've done is I went ahead and got a couple extensions with a swivel joint on the end of that. Switched over to the smaller impact. we go so the simplest way pull it out of the bottom you can see I told you this shock didn't really need replaced but I'm upgrading them so those are that one actually still in really good shape all right so we have the new shock here it's gonna go ahead and place that bolt in so you're lining everything up. Oops. All right. So remember I said this had a little lock on the nut. Keep it from spitting. So I'm just gonna Get that started and hang that back up in there. I'm gonna work on the top. So in order for me to compress this one, I've gotta kinda get on it here and hang. There we go. Woo! This doesn't move. On this one, everything is moving and articulating here on the bottom. So as long as I can get this here up out of the way, and I think I can do it right there. So I'll mount that probably right there, get that up out of the way, make sure it doesn't rub on my tire here, 
and then I should be set. So let's go ahead and let's get that top mounted. And again, tighten that up. All right, now we gotta figure out how to mount this. I have come to a bit of a different conclusion than what I originally had set up. Originally, I was gonna have this rotated towards the back and then rotate this towards the front. But instead what I did was I rotated that towards the front and then I can mount that towards the back. And I just feel it. It looks and mounts a whole lot better. So let's get that mounted up right there. And so I'm going to tighten this one like my life depends on it or, you know, like I don't want this one coming loose or I'm out on some back road somewhere. Click. There we go. All right, we are mounted. Don't want to forget about this guy. We'll tighten him up. squeeze I think we're good here's what we have I gotta say that looks pretty sexy all right cool all right man I got everything all buttoned up make sure you get if you do this make sure you get all this buttoned up make sure you double check your upper and lower uh, nuts and bolts make sure all that's done um, I know on these ones here I was using a wrench on the other ones uh, typically they have a wrench those ones did have an Allen set up so the Allen would have went right in there there's just no room to get to it on these rears uh, you can see these ones here man they were shot they were they were done uh, the front they were getting that way they were starting to break down a little bit rust um, I probably could have got another 20,000 miles or so out of those ones and, and it would have been fine, but it was just uncomfortable. So I'm changing the rears, might as well change the fronts. Um, and like I said, anytime I got to do anything, any maintenance on my truck, if I do it myself, then I can afford to upgrade it. So it makes everything better. It wasn't a hard job. It was tricky in some places, so you just got to use your imagination. Um, and again, whether you're going with Bilsteins, you're going with Fox, um it doesn't matter it's going to be the same procedure the same technique and then uh you know i'm not trying to start a debate i told you why i went with fox and uh we'll see if i'm happy with it so anyway if you found this useful if you liked it make sure you hit that like button if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so yet make sure you subscribe all right guys i will catch you on the next video and thanks for watching i get these dents out Just like new.